to begin with our calendar. Let's look at our months of the year. January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December. We are in the month of May. So we're going to go ahead and put May over here. The year is 2020. So we're going to go ahead and put that in. Today is the 6th. So we're going to go ahead and cross out the days that have already passed. And we're going to stop at the number 6. Are you ready? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay. If we look at the calendar, we know that today is Wednesday. So we're going to go ahead and find Wednesday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. So today is Wednesday. Today is Wednesday. Tomorrow will be Thursday. So let's go ahead and drag Thursday this way. Yesterday was, if today is Wednesday, yesterday was Tuesday. Great job. We're going to go ahead and move on to fluency. For fluency, we're going to read the words, and as we read them, we will cross them out. A, I, the, and, go, had, he. B, C, has, you, we, of. In, M, at, to, as, have. It, is, she, can, his, him, on. Did, girl, for, but, up, all. Look, with, her, what, was, were. Said, that, down, they, some, there. Boy, out, do, little, then, when. Okay. If you're able to read all the words, go ahead and time yourself. And what you want to do is you want to be able to read more words the following day. So if today you read, um, let's say, 20 words, you want to be able to read at least one more or a couple more tomorrow, so 21 or 22. What does this word here say? Where? Where? A lot of people get this word and were confused. So try to remember that the one with the H says where. It's talking about location. Where? And this one without the H says were. Okay, let's move on. For reading, we have the story and we have a couple of questions. Jack and Jill. Jack and Jill went up the hill to fetch a pail of water. Jack fell down and broke his crown and Jill came tumbling after. This is a poem. It's also a nursery rhyme. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and move on to the next page. Here we have word work, part one, letter J. Directions. Listen as your teacher reads each instruction. Then name the picture practicing the J sound. Find something that is glass. Color the box green. So here we have three boxes. Which of these is something that is glass? The jar. So we're going to color it green. So let's go ahead and let's color the jar green because it is made out of glass. Number two, find something that holds water. Color the box brown. What is something that holds water? A jug. So we're going to color it brown. Can you say jug? J, j, jug. This one over here is jar. They both have the j sound. Okay. Number three, find something that jiggles. Color the box red. So here we have jello. Jello is something that wiggles. So we're going to color it red. Okay. Now part two, vocabulary. Directions. Circle the answer to each question. Number one, which arrow points up? So we have three arrows. We're going to circle the one that's pointing up. This one's pointing up, pointing down, and pointing to the right. Number two, which shows someone who fell? So if we look at the three pictures, we see someone doing jump rope. It looks like someone fell and someone playing tennis. 
So we're going to circle the middle one. Okay, next. Picture this. Directions. Write yes or no to answer each question. Are Jack and Jill friends? Yes, they are. So let's go ahead and let's write it in. Yes. Number two. Does Jack feel good after his fall? No, he does not. Number three. Does Jill fall down? Yes. Okay, next we're going to move on to math. For math, we're going to answer some questions. Number one, which shows joining the two groups? So we're going to join both groups. Let's count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we have five plus three equals eight. So let's look at our answer choices. Letter A says three and three is six. B, five and three is eight. That's the same as our equation. C, three and four is seven. D, six and two is eight. So our answer has to be B. Okay, number two, which shows joining the two groups? So we're gonna put them together. First, we have a group of two, and then we have another group of two. I put a plus sign because we are joining. Another word for joining is adding, putting it together. So two plus two equals four. So let's see which of these matches our equation. Letter A, four and two is six. Do we have a total of six balls? No, so we know for sure it's not A. Letter B, four and one is five. No, good job. Letter C, three and two is five. It does not match. Letter D, two and two is four. Yes. Okay, we're going to move on to the next page. Number three, which shows joining the two groups? So we have two books and one, two, three, four, five more equals. So to find our answer, we need to add them. Five plus two equals seven. So let's see which of these matches our number sentence. Two and five is seven. Two plus five equals seven. Yes. So we found our answer. Answer is letter A. Let's look at number four. Which shows joining the two groups? So we have our first group is three bears. One, two, three. We're going to put a plus sign because we are joining them. We're putting them together. Two more. Three plus two equals five. So let's see which of our answers matches our number sentence. Four and two is six. Three and two is five. Three and two is five. Yes. We found our answer. Answer is letter B. Okay, the last page for the math. Number five, which shows joining the two groups. So we have a group of two butterflies. We're going to join them, so we're going to put a plus sign. 
One, two, three, four, five more. So two plus five equals five, six, seven. So let's see which of these matches our number sentence. Two and two is four? No. Two and five is seven? Yes. Our answer is B. Okay, we're gonna move on to science. For science, we're going to read the story and we're gonna answer some questions at the end. Plants live on land. Animals live on land. Plants live in water. Animals live in water. Plants and animals live in hot places. Plants and animals live in cold places. So let's go to our questions. Do you understand? Tell or draw your answers. Number one, where do cows live? So if we go back to the story, we know that cows live on land. It tells us right here, they live on land. So for number one, we're going to put cows live on land. Make sure when you write a sentence, you have a capital letter at the beginning and a punctuation mark at the end. Number two, where do fish live? So if we go to the second page in the story, we know that fish live in the water. Fish live in water. Remember, you can write it out or you can draw your answer. So if you want to draw a picture of the fish in the water, you can do that as well. Number three, draw an animal that lives on land. Draw an animal that cannot live on land. Tell about your drawings. You can work with a partner. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's draw the first one is going to be land and the second one is going to be cannot live on land so I'll put land and I'll put a, an X on top of it so we know that it means it does not live on the land okay so can you think of an animal that lives on land we looked over here on uh, the story it shows us a lamb a chicken and there's other you can draw other animals that are not in the story I'm gonna go ahead and draw a dog a dog lives on land or a horse is also a good idea a goat let me go ahead and draw a goat I'm gonna try my best here's the head the body the legs the tail, the ears. Okay, so there's my goat and it lives on land. So I'm gonna draw some grass. And then an animal that does not live on land, an example would be fish. Let's go ahead and draw fish. Can you think of something else? Another animal that does not live on land? Sharks, dolphins, seals, those are all great answers. Okay. Next, we're going to move on to social studies. For here, for social studies, we're going to go ahead and read the story again about pe presidents and patriots, and then we're going to answer some questions. Presidents and patriots. A president is the leader of a country. Patriots are people who love their country. 
George Washington was the first president of the United States. He is known as the father of our country. And here's a picture of George Washington. Abraham Lincoln was a president who loved his country. He is known as Honest Abe. And here's a picture of Abraham Lincoln. George Washington and Abraham Lincoln were presidents and patriots. We honor George Washington and Abraham Lincoln on President's Day. President, President's Day is the third Monday in February. So if we count one, two, three, that's the third Monday in the month February. Okay, we're going to move on to the next page. Benjamin Franklin was a patriot. He believed America should be a free country. Benjamin Franklin believed that all the states needed to work together to be free. And here's a picture of Benjamin Franklin. Harriet Tubman was a patriot who was once a slave. She helped almost 300 other slaves escape to freedom. Helping slaves escape was very dangerous. Harriet Tubman was very brave. And here's a picture of Harriet Tubman. And here we have a picture of Stephen F. Austin and Jose Antonio Navarro. So Stephen F. Austin was a patriot. He helped families who came to settle in Texas. Jose Navarro, sorry, Jose Antonio Navarro was a patriot. He helped write new rules for Texas citizens. These men helped our state grow. So let's go ahead and go to the questions. It says, circle the pictures that show presidents. So if we look here, there's two pictures that show presidents. We have Abraham Lincoln, so we're going to circle him. And we have George Washington, so we're going to circle him as well. Next, it says, write an X above the pictures that show patriots. Harriet Tubman is a patriot and Benjamin Franklin. So we drew X's on top. How many pictures show presidents? Two. How many pictures show patriots? Two. Listen and follow along while your teacher reads each sentence. Circle yes if the sentence is correct. Circle no if the sentence is not correct. Number one. Stephen F. Austin helped people move out of Texas. So we go back to the story. It tells us Stephen F. Austin was a patriot. He helped families who came to settle in Texas. This means that he helped people move and live in Texas. So did he help people move out of Texas? No, he did not. So we're going to circle no. Number two, Jose Antonio Navarro helped write rules for citizens in Texas. If you go to the story, it tells us Jose Antonio Navarro was a patriot. He helped write new rules for Texas citizens. So yes, he did help write rules for citizens in Texas. And here's a little story, American stories, Salem Poor. Salem Poor was a patriot. He was born a slave, but he bought his own freedom. He fought in the American Revolution against the British to help America become free, too. Salem was a brave soldier. He got a reward for being brave during the war. That's all we have for today. Have a great day.